Hey booktube, it's Jackie. How's it going? If you're new to me and it's the first time you're seeing my face, hello, what's up? My name's Jackie. I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's going to be happening today. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in and continued support. I really do appreciate it. So today for you, I have my most anticipated releases of 2024, at least within the first five months. Um, these are books that are coming out, um, January through, I believe the last one is in May. Yes. And that's what I've been able to find. So it's kind of like the winter, early spring releases. Uh, so I'll probably be doing another one of these later on in the year uh, for those back half of the year releases. But these are the ones that I'm looking forward to in the first half and I'm super, super excited. Um, I've never done an anticipated release video because I usually have never kept on top of the releases. So really excited to do another first on my channel. So yay, thumbs up for me. So without further ado, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat, and let's get talking about some upcoming releases that I am stoked about. Okay, so I am gonna be doing these in the order that they are releasing. So this is not in the order of how excited I am for them. This is just the order of the release dates. So you kind of know what's gonna be sort of coming down the pike later. So this is a little bit of a spoiler for some of my future TBRs, but uh, you know how it goes. That's just kind of the way of the bookish world. So the first one, and everybody knows this one's coming out. Um, obviously this is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass, and it looks like this. Um, its release date is January 30th of 2024. Um, yeah. So funny thing about this one, I haven't read the second book. It's actually on my 12 and 24, so I should probably get on that uh, so I can be prepared when this comes out at the end of the month of January to pick up immediately. Um, this is the third installment of the Crescent City series. I do not know if this is the final installment. I'm going to make a safe assumption that it's probably not. Um, but I have not read the second book, so I have no idea how the second book ends. And I don't know if this one's going to end on a cliffhanger or whatnot, but I'm super, super excited. This is probably my favorite cover of the three. This gold detailing, all of the covers have some sort of foiling on them. So I'm really, really excited to see what this one looks like. Um, this one so far takes the cake out of the three of them just from the image. So once I actually physically get in my hand, I'll make that final decision of which one I think is the best of the three. But so far on cursory glance, this is, this is up there. I, I'm super, super excited about this one. Um, now, so funny story about this whole series. The first book um, I bought when it first came out, but I didn't read it. I didn't read it for years after. And I actually have a full book review of me reading the first one and I'll link it here in the corner for you so you can go check it out. Um, and then when the second one came out, I did buy it, but I again, didn't read it because I hadn't read the first one. Um, so I'm excited because I will actually, fingers crossed, I get the second one read, be in on this one when it drops. Um, I've never been in on the series installment drops um, since I've been here on YouTube. I've never been kind of that booktuber, but it's something I'd like to get better about of actually like being ready for that next installment to come out to read it uh, right when it comes out and not wait forever in a day. But I think it's something we all kind of do to ourselves. We all, we all do it. But um, I'm really, really excited about this one. I'm excited to be in on it. And I really hope that I do get the second book read um, in time. So when this one comes out, if I want, I can immediately pick it up right then and there and be in all the ground floor discussions with all my friends that are reading this book because I know a lot of people that I'm friends with are super stoked about this book. They are waiting. They will probably take the day off of work when it comes. Um, I'm not that diehard. Let's just be honest. Out of her three series, this is my least favorite of the three series, but it's still really, really well done. Um, she does a really good job with it, but the first book was definitely not the Sarah that I was used to until the very, very tail end. So I'm hoping that in book two, that will get rectified and then it will continue with the Sarah that I know just like amplified um, in this one. So excited, January 30th, 2024. This is the first big release of the year. Um, a lot of people are expecting this one. It's gonna flood booktube. You're gonna see it all over the place, but hopefully you'll still want to see my opinions on it. Um, but yes, House of Shadow and, or House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass, the third Soul with Crescent City series, January 30th, 2024. It's in the books. Let's do this. The next one um, is actually an author that I've never read, but I have wanted to pick her up for a while. She has a series that um, has always intrigued me. I don't own it, but I think I might go pick it up one day. Um, but this 
book I'm actually really, really excited about because of what it's about. And this is The Warm Hand of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. And it is releasing February 13th. It is a World War I historical fiction with ghosts centered around Flanders Field. And that's fucking cool as hell. I thought that was dope. When I read the synopsis of this, I was like, okay, so that sounds fucking cool. And this cover intrigued me. Like, I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I was looking at the new releases coming up um, in the first part of the year, this one stopped me because of the cover. And I was like, okay, let's... And I noticed her name and I was like, okay, I've, I've heard of her. I haven't read her, but let me read the synopsis. And then when I read it about a nurse and her brother who um, is possibly becoming a ghost of these trenches to keep people away on Flanders Field. And you have this historical element with this magical realism, ghostly, paranormal sort of uh, feel. I was like, sign me the fuck up right now. That sounds dope as fuck. So I'm super excited about this one. I, I feel like I'm really, really going to enjoy this one. Um, and if I do, I definitely will then obviously go pick up that other series um, that I've been eyeballing for a while. Um, but this one definitely, I think is more up my alley than that one is. So I, I'm, I'm glad I waited because I feel like, I feel like this could be something pretty special for me. I do. We just been looking at the synopsis and this cover. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. This thing's fucking stunning. So yeah, but this is February 13th, 2024. So I do have until Valentine. It could be a Valentine's Day gift. <coughs> My husband's right over there. So um, Valentine's Day gift. Thank you. <laughs> February 13th. So there you go. Um, it's on the books. The, uh, the next book that I'm really excited about coming out, and this one is no surprise to anybody. It has been pushed back. It was supposed to come out at the end of last year, but it did not. It got pushed back. And that is Touch of Chaos by Scarlett St. Clair. <laughs> Yay! This is coming out March 12th, as long as it does not get pushed back again. Um, March 12th, final installment to the Touch of Darkness series. However, this is also the final installment to the Hades saga because in this book, from my understanding, Scarlet St. Clair has combined both POVs. So we have the Touch of Darkness, which is um, Persephone's perspective, and the Hades saga, which is Hades' perspective of the same storyline. And it's gonna be dual POV in the same book. I'm fucking ecstatic. I cannot wait for this. I'm gonna this one is the is one of them on this list that as soon as I get it, I'm gonna probably start reading immediately because I need to know. This has been a favorite series of mine for a long time. It actually is one of the catalysts that kind of spearheaded me getting back into booktube was this book. So it's definitely on my radar. I've been waiting for it. I'm good. Let's go. I am ready. Bring this shit on because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to find out the concomination of the story and see what happens with my beloved Hades and Persephone and see if Persephone holds on to that badass that she had at the end of Touch of Mouse because that bitch was on fire at the end of that book. And I am ecstatic to see if she holds and maintains that. Um, this confrontation with Demeter and all the gods in the war. And I'm, just, I'm so, so excited. And I am ready to see Hades lose his fucking shit again. I'm ready for it. Sign me the fuck up. Let's do this. Bring it on. Super, super pumped. Uh, March 12th. March 12th. Now, March is a really big month because another book that I am super, super excited about coming back, coming out is also, from what I can find, releasing on March 12th as well. And that is Empire of the Dan by Jay Crystal! The second installment to the Empire of the Vampire series. Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff was my book of the year 2022. I have yet to shut up about this fucking book. Yet to shut up. I still tell everybody I know about this book. I love this book. It's, it's fucking phenomenal. Um, and the sequel is finally coming out. Um, this is the date that I was able to locate um, for it. So I'm hoping that I am right March 12th of 2024 but I am ready. I am excited about looking towards my reread of Empire of the Vampire, except I plan on listening to it because there is an audiobook out there and since I've already physically read the book, I would like to read it. I like to listen to an audio and actually hear the voice of Gabriel de Leon saying some of his one-liners, that snarky comeback, that conversation, that guttural tone that I've envisioned with him. I am ready, I wanna hear it, and I am so, so pumped for my reread of this book and for this one to come out. This is the one that I am looking forward to the most besides Touch of Chaos. These are the two, these are the two big ones for the first part of the year for me. I'm super, super excited. The only thing that, um, 
is a little unnerving about this book that I have been able to find so far. And I'm hoping that I am wrong. Um, I have found that it's only maybe 400 pages and Empire of the Vampire was 800 plus pages. So if he cuts the second book by half, um, that, that, that thing better be a fucking powerhouse. Cause I'm not waiting another fucking two years. I'm not, I'm, I'm, mm, I will be very upset, Jackie. Um, very, very upset. So I'm really hoping that what I read was wrong or maybe like a precursor. I don't know. Or maybe I just saw something that wasn't actually there, but I'm really hoping that this thing holds, um, the the same greatness epic level that I thought Empire of the Vampire had. Uh, this book put vampires back on the map for me and I'm ready for them to continue being amazing. This is the continuation to Gabriel de Leon's story, The Last Silver Saint, and him telling his story of how he became the last silver saint. Um, I am just dying for this continuation, this epic blood-soaked story. I'm ready to meet some new characters. I'm ready to hate people. I'm ready to fall in love with people. I'm ready to laugh at people. I'm ready to feel uncomfortable with people. I am fucking ready. Bring this shit on. I've waited long enough. God damn it. I want my fucking book. All right. So March 12th. This is the biggie. March 12th. March 12th is a big day. It's a big day in March. It's a big day. So cool thing. I don't have a lot of family commitments in March. So that's fantastic. So I, I hope I'll be able to knock out both of my two big expectancies of the of the year so far very very quickly sorry about that guys my uh my storage beat that it was full so i had to do a little cleanup on my phone uh so what i was saying before i was so rudely cut off on my phone uh the next one that is i'm very excited about coming out it comes out april 9th and that is lee bardugo's the familiar looks like this now when this one came across my radar a couple months ago actually I was really intrigued by the synopsis. I have never read a Lee Bardugo book. I've been intrigued by their books before, but I've never just gone out and actually picked one up. But this one really caught my eye because this one is witchcraft and the Spanish Inquisition. And if you know anything about the Spanish Inquisition, it's a very, very dark period in our history. It's a very bloody history, bloody part of our history, and it's fucking creepy as shit. Some of the stuff that they did during this was crazy. I don't understand why there's not like a television show about the Spanish Inquisition, like an FX, you know, television show, because I feel like it would hit really, really well because it was dark. It was bloody. It was conspiratorial. It was nuts. Um, I think it would do great. Somebody should get on that. But um, I'm not here for that. Uh, I'm here for this book. I'm really excited about this one. Um, it starts off with like a Cinderella style handmaiden. Um, who's discovered to be able to do magic and so to propel her family they have her do this but she has to keep it under wraps because of the Spanish Inquisition going on they can't catch her eye uh, because of what might happen and then I feel like there's going to be a love story component because she has to uh, get tied in with the familiar and so I'm really excited about this and this cover fuck me this cover's gorgeous I mean look at this thing this thing's awesome I'm super super excited about this book um Obviously not as excited about my other two, but this one is definitely on my radar to pick up when it comes out for sure and to look for. And this might be my first Lee Bardugo. Um, so if you've ever read Lee Bardugo before, let me know what I'm expecting. Um, I don't know if this is a different uh, age level that she's writing in or um, what have you. I, I don't I don't know because I've never read any, any of their work before. So we shall see, but I am excited and intrigued for sure. The next one is actually a nonfiction book, and I'm really excited about this one because I've read one other book by this author a long time ago, and that was Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, and he has a new book coming out April 30th, The Demon of Unrest. It looks like this. This is a nonfiction story about the hours leading up to the American Civil War and Lincoln's uh, focusing on Lincoln's unrest in regards to it, and um, I love that shit. I love books about finite periods of time and, like, unknown um, like small increments because it, it really forces the author to do their research and do the nitty gritty and the the unknown moments. Um, I really enjoy that. And Devil in the White City was fucking amazing. So it is the only book I've ever read by Eric Larson. Um, so this would be my second and he has quite a few. He's got one about the Lusitania too, which I've considered picking up. Um, but I'm definitely excited about this one because American Civil War is a time period in American history that I love studying. It's very intriguing. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff about that time period other than just the battles and military strategy 
there's so much because it's so it's so encompassing in our in our world's in our country's history. Um, so I, I love seeing all the different viewpoints and the different um, areas that people go when they research it. So I'm excited to see his take on it for sure. Uh, definitely, I'm I'm excited. Um, April 30th though, uh, 2024. So this is one of the later ones, but still very very excited about it. This next one, um, straight, the last one actually, is straight up because of the cover. I love this cover. I think it's fucking stunning. And this is My Darling Dreadful Thing by Joanna Von Fien. Um, it is a gothic horror with backroom, backroom seances, ghostly companions, and murder. Um, it sounds like a very updated uh, murder in Venice is actually what it kind of sounds like. And I'm ready. I'm good. Let's do this. Uh, it sounds intriguing. This cover is stunning. And it uh, comes out May 14th, which is actually the day before my birthday. So, <clears throat> birthday present. Husband is still right there. Um, <laughs> this is how I drop hints, guys. <laughs> Just <clears throat> May 14th. So, I'm very excited about this one. Um, it does come out late, later in the season. So, hopefully my excitement still stands. But, uh yeah, this one definitely is as intriguing and it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I do like seances. I read a couple seance books last year and I really enjoyed them and I had a good time with them. So it's definitely something that um, I want to continue looking for. And I think this one is right up my alley. So yeah, that's right around my birthday. So perfect timing. All right, perfect timing. And there is one other book, but I don't actually know when its release date is. Um, Christina Marziotis is slowly releasing more books of her Love Letting series. And I'm pretty sure that she's going to be releasing book four in 24. I just don't know when. And I'm excited because I fucking love that series. I do. I um, mean, she's also my friend. So I definitely am excited about reading her book when it comes out. Now, from what I do know is when she released her first three books, she did start writing new pieces that might be turn into a new book four than what she originally had in, in envisioned for book four. Now her original book four, according to her first book, um, I believe was supposed to, I think she actually has the title in here. I think. Uh, book four was to be entitled Slave. I don't know if that's still the case, but according to her first book, that is the title of book four and I'm intrigued I'm intrigued this whole series intrigues me because th th nobody's fucking safe nobody's safe and I'm excited about it for sure um I know nothing about it though um because you you can't really know going into her books so I don't know if that's still the same book four because as I said um she did start including new pieces and it's kind of formulating she said she had to rework book four so I don't know if it's still considered slave or if she's creating a whole new book within it. Um, so it'll definitely be a surprise this year when book four is announced and I for sure will be reviewing it. I'm reviewing this entire series for her uh, because I fucking love this bitch. She's my, she is, she just cut from a separate cloth. Like we are the same cloth, okay? We're the same person, just different ends of the spectrum. It's, it's crazy how much we um, are alike and how much I love her to death. Like I just, I'm self for adoption, just saying saying uh yeah there so but I'm definitely excited for her new book I just don't exactly know any of the details about it yet um she's keeping those pretty close to the vest and which scares me sometimes <laughs> it could be scary <laughs> but those are what I am looking forward to in 2024 um release dates that I do know about and um the ones that are really on my radar to watch out for so that is what I got for you guys today let me know if any of these are appealing to you and if you were excited about any of these releases or what book you were looking forward to most in the first half of 2024 uh that is dropping if it's not on this list, let me know. Maybe it's something that I just didn't, miss, that I missed and I didn't catch. So I love you all. I hope you guys have a great new year and um, all your new anticipations live up to the hype that we've built up in our heads because we do this as readers. We do. So that's what I got for you guys today. I will see you guys all soon with another video. Love you. Bye.